guys, good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you may be. It's been a very long time since I've done a YouTube video and the reason for that is because this guy here laying next to me has been here for three months, four months I think actually and last four months that he's been here have been pretty intense and busy and I've been spending a lot of time with him which is why I haven't had very much time for YouTube. But about a week ago I asked you guys for some help and you were awesome and did everything you could to help me which has resulted in this Q&A video. He wanted his first YouTube moment so I thought that the best way to have his first YouTube moment was to do a and a I have 19 questions from 10 different people and because you were also awesome and you've asked some brilliant questions I'm going to answer them all. This video is going to be a little long. But that's okay. I'm sure you're going to enjoy hearing the answers to all the questions. So, I think we should... Are you quite comfortable? Okay. Are you sure you're comfortable? Okay. He's now laying with his head in between my legs, guys. That's uh, charming. Really charming. So, without further ado, let's answer some questions. Kirsty asks, can you describe Dom for those of us who can't see the picture? Yes, Kirsty, I can. Don is a four-year-old Labrador Retriever. So if you felt a Labrador or if you felt a Retriever, you'll hopefully have some idea of what Don uh, feels like. He is a blonde Labrador Retriever. His body is shaped like a Labrador and his head is the Retriever-shaped head with very nice soft ears. He has big brown eyes and he also has uh, not so very wet brown nose at this moment, but it's, it's a nose nonetheless. And it's brown. He's tall. I'm about 149 centimeters tall, or for you guys in the UK, I'm 4 feet 11 inches. And when Don stands up, his back comes up about three quarters of the way up my leg. So he's a really tall Labrador Retriever. Um, and as I said before, he's blonde, but he does have some white patches. Uh, there's a band of white hair just behind his shoulders and just in front of his front shoulders and also on his tummy there's a whole bunch of white hair too. Nim asks describe Don in three words. Don is friendly, funny and he has a real willingness to learn. Hmm, That's not three words is it? No. Okay well you get my idea. Then we come to the really difficult part of the video where I have to say this really confusing name. Your name is Zenab. Zenab. I don't think you pronounce the I. Z E I. So wait, Z E N A I B. Zen Zenab. Why don't I just call you Z and this will be easy for the rest of the video? No, I think you pronounce it Zenab. And Zenab asks, is it difficult to care for him? Well, I am very much used to having a dog, so I personally don't find it difficult to care for him because I've done it multiple times before with multiple dogs. Uh, one of my own before and I've also looked after other people's dogs before. There are a couple of things you have to consider when you have limitations and a visual impairment like I do. Uh, because of the combination of wheelchair and practically not being able to see anything, I cannot go and take him for walks by myself so I need somebody who's willing to be my eyes and go with me to enable me to do that. I also don't have a lot of strength in my hands so brushing him doesn't always work the way I want it to. I have to ask with some extra help with that sometimes. And it's also super important that I get his food and water on the floor safely without falling on my head. But for the rest, for me, it's just a case of doing what I've always done with a dog. I don't find it hard to take care for him. It just presents some challenges which require a little out of the box thinking. Amanda asks, which school or charity did he come from? Well, Amanda, he came from an organisation called Personal Service Dogs, and that's a Dutch organisation which trains service dogs for people with a physical limitation. Ellie asks, is he your first guide dog? If not, how does it compare to other guide dogs? If it is your first guide dog, how is life adjusting to having a service dog? Well, Ellie, he's not a guide dog. He is a... ADL service dog and I will explain more about the difference in a little while. He is my first service dog so it's been a bit of a big adjustment around here. Like I've said I've had it really busy the last four months because while we're in training all the training is done here at home which meant weekly appointments with the trainer and meant doing a lot of focus on what we've learned 
and learning him to uh, get a connection with me and learning him to work with me. Uh, so yeah, it's been a big adjustment, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. Ah, you're here again. Zenab. 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 I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, you ask, what's the difference between a guide dog and a service dog? Well, a guide dog is trained as a mobility aid. So he helps a blind or visually impaired person get from one place to another. Whether that's going from home to school or finding your way around the big university complex. It's a mobility aid and it helps you get from one place to another. A uh, service dog, specifically Don, is an ADL service dog and he is trained to help with tasks in and outside of the house. Linda asks, does Don get along with you? Yes, Linda, Don really does get along with me. As you can see, he's quite comfortable here with his head practically breaking my leg. He's got a rather heavy head. Um, it's very important in the very first stages of the process when the organisation finds an available dog it's very important to make sure that he gets along with me because if he doesn't he's not going to do any of the work tasks that I ask him to do so yep get, he gets along with me then made sure of that before he was even placed in my house Angela asks do you have a special bond together does he have some kind of instinct to protect you that's a really good question Angela yeah I'm pretty sure by now he does have a bond with me the last four months have been very intense because we've had to work on building that bond that isn't instant. Um, does he have an instinct to protect me? I wouldn't say it's an instinct, or at least I don't know if it's an instinct, but he has done some pretty special things in the time that he's been here already, which suggests to me he knows I need a little bit more help than the average person. Chelsea asks, what's your favorite place to work your dog? Well, Chelsea, I'm not sure if you thought while you were asking this question that he's a guide dog, but like I've just said in a previous question, he's not a guide dog, he's a service dog. Although we do work in multiple different places. We work in different rooms in the house, we do work outside, we do work at restaurants. There's a lot of different places where uh, we do work, even though it's not mobility work. But I have to say, I think his favourite place, place to work is downstairs in the living room, because that's where we do many of the tasks that he likes to do. Nim asks, what's the most unexpected thing or the thing that surprised you the most about Don? Nim, to answer your question, I want to go back to Angela's question a little bit and talk about the special instinct that he has to protect me, which I'm not sure, I'm still not sure if I want to call that an instinct, but it is the thing that surprises me the most about him because he clearly uh, makes a bond with people really fast and it's very obvious that he made a bond with me really fast because a few weeks ago he was here for about two, three weeks. I got sick, I got an ear infection and that made me a very dizzy person. And when I have dizzy spells, they happen at night, they happen in my bed uh, and my head turns to the right, my body gets stiff. And I guess to anybody who doesn't know what's happening, it looks like an epileptic seizure. It's not an epileptic seizure at all. I'm completely aware of what's happening when it's happening. They usually wake me up. They last for about 30 seconds and when it's done, I'm chilled and relaxed again and there's no problem. But I guess he wasn't realising that because he thought there was some kind of seizure and he spent the four or five nights watching me while I was having problems with those dizzy spells. He didn't sleep. He wanted to watch me, he wanted to protect me and he wanted to make sure I was doing okay. He followed me everywhere during the day and that's a pretty amazing thing for a dog to do when he's only been in the house for three weeks. So I guess he kind of does have some idea that I need protecting. And that was very unexpected. My friend is here again with another question. Zenab of Zenab of Zenab. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce it. Wants to know what kind of things Don does for me. Don is an ADL service dog and that means he helps with tasks in and around the house which means he can do things such as picking things up from the floor, taking clothing out of the washing machine, helping me take off my clothing, turning on and off lights by pulling ropes such as this one here behind me. Uh, he can help me get up off the floor if I fall. He's really smart and he does a lot of things. 
too many to name, it would make this video very long. Kirsty asks what's the most recent thing he has learned. The most recent thing that he learned was to pull on a rope in order to close the doors where the ropes are hanging in this house. And we're currently busy learning him to react to the alarm clock, which is basically just a sound that goes off on my phone, so that I can wake up way much easier by him having him stick his nose in my face. But we're not very far with that yet, we still have a lot of work to do. Nim asks, does he have a favourite task? Well Nim, he's a Labrador Retriever and I think every Retriever's dream is to find things and bring them back to their owners and that's definitely his favourite thing to do. Whether it's picking something up off the floor, pulling off my shoes, going to fetch his tennis ball for me, it's all fun and it's... Yeah, he would do it all day if I let him. Deborah! Deborah, you have asked one long essay of a question, so I'm going to get voiceover to read it for me because if I try to remember it, I'm going to screw it up. Deborah, I'm guessing Don has some time in a day where he is off duty, during playtime. Is it hard for him to switch from playtime into duty time? That's actually a really good question, Deb. Um, everything that Don does, so all of the work tasks that he's been trying to do, have all been trained based on playing a game, so whether it's tugging a rope like this one behind me, uh, whether it's picking something up off the floor or getting something out of the washing machine, all been or it's all been based on playing games. This tugging of the rope came from playing with a tub toy, a rope tub toy that you get for your puppy. Um, picking stuff up off the floor is based on uh, throwing and retrieving a tennis ball. That's the same with getting stuff out of the washing machine. Again, that's based on a tug game. So no, uh, most of the time, actually almost all of the time, he has no trouble whatsoever switching from work to play. What he does have trouble with and what we still need to work on because it's quite normal for him to have trouble with it at this moment due to the fact he's only been here for a few months is when we're outside and he's off leash and he's running around sometimes he has trouble listening when I call him back and usually I'm calling him back for safety reasons but sometimes that grass that's got millions and millions and millions of different pieces to it that smell all individually different is just way too much and he gets lost in that rather than listening to me but that's okay, he's a dog and that happens sometimes. But in general, no, he has no trouble whatsoever switching tasks. Chelsea asks what's his favourite thing to do when he's not working. Uh, there are three things that he likes to do the most when he's not working. One of them is lying with me on my bed or if he gets a chance lying with me on the couch. His second favourite thing is to go play with his tennis ball. And the third favourite thing is to go on long walks and spend hours on then sniffing every blade of grass that has multiple different scents. I th he's definitely an outdoor dog, he likes being outdoors and he really loves to play. Amanda asks, do you have any toy suggestions? Yes Amanda, I do have some toy suggestions for you, only I was not prepared and I left the toys downstairs so I cannot show you but I will describe to you the best I can what I have. Uh, because he's a service dog and because he's a pretty intelligent dog I have mostly puzzle toys, one of which is a cone, which is a cone-shaped um, cone rubber toy with a hole in the bottom and the idea is that you put treats in the hole, you put it on the floor, he rolls it around, he gets the treats out. A very similar puzzle is a ball, which is not made by Kong, I th actually think that toy is brandless, um, but it also ha has two holes in it, one at the top and one at the bottom. And there are also rubber flaps inside this ball which makes it a little bit harder for the trees to fall out, takes them a bit longer to come out of the hole. But it's the same principle, put the treats in, put it on the floor, he rolls it around and tries to figure out how to get them out. Uh, I also have a flat uh, wooden bone, it's shaped like a bone, only on the top side it's got holes in it. Those holes have little sliding covers that can uh, cover them up, put the treats in the holes, cover up the treats. And he has to find out which treats I've put holes in, or which holes I've put treats in, helps if I say it the right way, and which holes I've not. It's very important to keep him entertained because I don't have work for him to do the whole day. So when he gets bored and when he starts losing his patience, we just give him a puzzle to do. Kong is my favourite black brand of toy. The reason for that is because he's strong and chew proof and he loves chewing on his toys. So Kong is the best way to go because of how strong they are. 
The only thing I avoid are Kong tennis balls and the reason for that is because they squeak and squeaky toys kind of make him a bit crazy so we try to avoid those at all costs. Kirsty asks what has he done recently that made you laugh or smile? Kirsty, he's a clown, he does things every day that make me laugh and smile. Uh, he really has some human-like characteristics, for example, he doesn't want to get out of bed in the morning when it's time to get up. He will roll on his back and put his paws up against his face and, no, I don't want to get up. He, he's literally a lazy dog when it comes to needing to get out of bed. That makes me giggle every single morning. Um, he has also, he's quite vocal, see if he gets bored or if he gets impatient. He makes noises and he tells me, he's like he talks and that also makes me laugh and giggle every day. Literally there's never a moment that goes by that he doesn't do something that makes me smile. He's a really silly dog. Holly asks what's your favourite thing about having a service dog? My favourite thing about having a service dog is the fact that it's boosted my self-confidence. It's crazy. And it's been like having a roller co riding on a roller coaster the last four months, but it's made me realise that I can, and it doesn't matter if I need an extra pair of paws to help me do it, I can do it, and that gives me a really good, happy, feel good feeling that I won't be without now. And lastly, but not definitely not least, my friend again is here with the question: Zainab, Zainab, Zainab. Help. I need help. That's what I need. I need help. She asks, would you say that having a service dog has changed your life? Yes, having a service dog has definitely changed my life. I honestly did not realise that doing something as simple as taking off a sweatshirt, pulling off a pair of pants, taking off my shoes, cost as much energy as it actually did. Before Don came into my life, I was getting out of my bed at 10am and at 2pm I was asleep again. And now, let's see, what's the time? Tell me, Mr. Watch. It's four. It's 3.52pm at the moment and I'm still awake. This is like the second time I've filmed this Q&A video today. So, it's very clear that having him do all of these simple tasks for me is enabling me to do things that I like to do and have fun doing. Which means I can spend more time talking to you guys. These really changed my life and... I definitely wouldn't change him for anything in the world now. He's he's mine for a very long time. I hope this video has been informative and interesting for you guys. I hope that he's enjoyed having his YouTube moment, although he slept through pretty much all of it. That doesn't matter. He's on camera and that's all that counts. Thank you guys very much for watching. Until next time, be good. And if you can't be good, have fun. Bye guys. If you'd like to know what we do besides YouTube, you can check out our website. Just go to www.justconnect.eu. If you'd like to follow us on social media and be the first to know when we upload a new video, my Twitter account is the CRS Life, and Jessica's Twitter account is Native Natures. Thanks for watching, guys. Until the next time, bye.